Uh, so I've got my roughed out spoon here from the spoon meal. And I like to do one step before uh, I do the rough hollow on this. So one thing, just while I'm at it, this could be done later, but I like to trim these ends while they're still green, just because it's a lot easier to cut through that end grain rather than waiting for them to dry out. Another uh, benefit of that is I think that leaving a burnished, uh, nice, clean, smooth cut surface rather than the rough sawn surface might make them a little bit less prone to checking in the end grain. I'm not positive if that's the case, but it's, uh, it's what I've, I don't know, seems to help a little bit in my experience anyway. So I'll trim that. And then just like I was, uh, I'm an advocate of keeping things 2D and uh, not doing any sculpting and using, you know, you do it, you, you carve these things systematically to where, you know, at first you're using the lines as your reference, then you're using that newly carved surface as a reference for the next plane over. And uh, like I was, you know, I finished the top surface and use that as a reference to do the back surface. Uh, I have the same thinking with the hollowing. Before I hollow, I want to have um, the perimeter of my bowl fully tuned in and finished uh, so that that line, you know, I'm not going to change that line again so once I have it finished. So. I can use the outside lines as a reference for my hollowing. So my hollowing will be very consistent. I'm not going back uh, after the hollowing and trying to match the outside to the hollow at all. It's all, it's all gonna be set up right from this stage, so. So there's a front lip and I'm pretty close. It may be hard to see the the uh, little bumps and wiggles in here. I got close with the draw knife, but I, I always come back with uh, the hand knife or my slowed knife here and really tune up, just really get it right to where I want it to be as a finished product really smoothing out those lines. removing any chatter from those draw knife wiggle cuts too, much smoother cut. And again, I'm gonna take this as my last opportunity to even up these uh, points across right here too. Um, again, the back's looking good. I still think this side is a little uneven. I'm gonna take a little bit more. Yeah. Okay, so we're ready to go back to the mule and hollow this using our, you know, our very clean lines now as our, uh, as our 
new template to guide the hollow in there. Okay, so we're back at the mule, ready to do the last step here, um, do our rough hollow. Um, and just like my other video on the setup of this mule, this is a perfect example of when I use this little, uh, this little spacer here. Since I'm gonna be having extra torque and twist um, doing this hollowing work, you can see these jaws, they're gripping a little low on the handle. I've got a wide stance. I slip this in here and I can get these jaws quite a bit higher, higher now. It was good to have them wide with the rough blank because I had more thickness and stuff. But now that this handle's real thinned out, I can close that up, get these uh, jaws a bit higher on the handle, and it's it's super solid. It's not going anywhere on me. It's very supported. Um, and so, again, I'm gonna use the finished lines, the finished perimeter we created as my guide here. Feel for the thickness. That's about it. Again, for me, this is, uh, I'm considering this still a rough hollow. I'll go back and tune that up after it's dry, usually with a, with a one-handed hook knife. So that's it at that point. That's my full process of working a green billet to uh, this stage where I'll let it dry. And then I will, uh, it's all set up for my finish work. All the, the profiles, they're all still very square. Um, but all the, the final lines are pretty much there. That means when I come back, really all I have to do is uh, add my bevels, my chamfers, and having them nice and, oh, these two planes really squared up makes adding those chamfers very easy. There's no, you're not chasing a line back and forth, um, trying to even stuff out if you start, um, if you start with a squared up piece like that, chamfers just come out even right from the get go.